Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is the final installment in the Guardians trilogy, and it's probably the last time I'll be genuinely excited for an MCU movie. Phase 4 has been pretty lackluster, it somehow managed to feel both directionless and too concerned with setting up other movies. So while I'm fairly checked out of Marvel movies as a whole, I'm very excited for new James Gunn movies. His version of Suicide Squad was one of my favourite movies of 2021. This guy knows how to juggle big ensemble pieces and he proves it again with Guardians Volume 3. This is definitely one of the best of recent Marvel fare, partly because it feels like an actual movie. There's no direct sequel coming, there's no spin-off show. For this iteration of the Guardians, this is it. And like all things you love, there is a part of me that wants to see these characters go on forever, but What's special and what excited me about this was the prospect of it all coming to a close. So at the beginning of this film, still reeling from the loss of Gamora, Peter Quill must rally his team to defend the universe and protect one of their own. If the mission is not completely successful, it could possibly lead to the end of the Guardians as we know them. That's a synopsis that gives very little away, but James Gunn has talked about his reason for wanting to come back and finish this trilogy is to tell Rocket's story. And it's Rocket that really is the heart of it. He was already one of my favourite characters, but I was really not prepared for how he was going to be pulled back here. When you think of a Guardians movie, you think of something light, fun, classic pop hits, but Rocket's story goes to some really dark places and it's brilliant. He's also connected quite directly to this film's villain, the High Evolutionary, who's one of the best Marvel villains we've had. James Gunn understands, just like Ego in Guardians 2, that connecting the bad guys directly to our heroes not only makes them way more interesting, but makes the stakes higher than the universe exploding ever could. Part of the High Evolutionary's deal is that he experiments on animals, and look, we've seen a million evil bad guys try to take over the world, but there's just something so awful about seeing this guy torture animals. It just takes it to a whole other level. He's a great character and the writing here makes you really hate him. As you'd expect, this cast of characters is still brilliant. I love the Guardians. At this point, there's been a lot of superhero teams, but this is the one I buy into the most. The Guardians really do feel like a family. Not only are they interesting characters as individuals, but the way they all butt heads and bicker and fight, but still love each other. It's that heart that really makes these movies. Now I front load all of that praise to make clear there's a lot of this movie I really loved. I think James Gunn is one of the most interesting filmmakers working today, but that said, there's also a lot of this film that really didn't work for me. A vast majority of that comes in the first 90 minutes. See, this film has the challenge of not only being a sequel, but also wrapping up a whole trilogy of movies. That's a tough jump to land. And while there's a lot of great moments at the start, I was actually taken aback by how, for me, a lot of it just felt like more of the same. We have a really great introduction, I love the song choice, but after that opening, it started to feel like another adventure of the week. It's a fun mission, I love how these characters interact with each other, the soundtrack as you expect was great, but it felt like it was treading water. It really wasn't until the last hour where you feel the film really start to kick into the real story and that it all came together, but even that doesn't save the rocky first half. That's not to say it doesn't do things differently or shake things up, it does. Unfortunately, with some of it, I appreciate the attempt more than I enjoyed the execution. And that's very much the case with Gamora. I usually don't like when characters get brought back from the dead, it cheapens the whole thing. But what I like about this on paper is that her death still has consequences. The Gamora we knew from the first two movies is gone, and so Quill has the torture of the person he loved being saved, but she doesn't remember him. It's a really tragic idea, and again, I love it in theory, but I don't actually think it ends up adding that much more to the movie. Instead, it just feels kind of weird, as Gamora is essentially a completely new character. It makes her hard to latch onto, and when this is supposed to be the last ride of this dysfunctional family, she starts to take away from it. I honestly think it would have been more interesting if she had just stayed dead. It ends up being too much. And I think that's the big problem I had with this movie. There's this absolutely beautiful story at the centre with Rocket, which is getting right to the heart of these characters and setting a pathway to the end. And then there's all this other stuff. Kraglin, one of the Ravagers, has a whole subplot with Cosmo the Space Dog. And, you know, I would like those characters. If this were a TV show and we had a little side adventure with them, sure. But this is supposed to be wrapping up the Guardians of the Galaxy. It just 
took away from what I was really interested in. I had the same issue with Adam Warlock. I really liked the actor Will Poulter who plays him and I was pretty interested to see what he'd do with the character but again he feels totally redundant here. Unfortunately his character is just not that interesting and he's just sort of there to create another obstacle in the plot. He doesn't bring anything to the story, he doesn't interact that much with anyone else. If I knew there was another Guardians movie coming it would feel like he's just there to set that up but there isn't one so why is he here? Well, there's an interview with James Gunn where he talks about how he had teased him in Guardians 2 and he felt a sort of pressure to include him here and he said it was very tough to make the character fit organically into this story and I can sympathise with that because it doesn't really work. He's here because James Gunn felt he sort of had to be and I can't help but wonder if that sense of obligation is what created a lot of the problems in this movie. Gunn has talked a lot about how much he loves the cast and crew of these movies, that they've become a family for him. When you're doing another one on a personal level, of course you want to bring everyone together, but I think it ends up being too much. So when this film wrapped up, it was a real mix of emotions for me. For one, I'm just glad this film exists. There was a period of time where it looked like Gunn wasn't going to get to wrap up his trilogy, and I'm so glad he did. He really loves these characters, and you can tell watching this film. It also hits some really powerful beats. It doesn't just go bigger, it goes deeper. And there's some fantastic lines as well. This guy's a damn good writer. I also just like where it ended up, but... I can't help but wonder if parts of this movie were sacrificed, it would have hit even harder. I really wanted to love Guardians 3, and parts of it I do, but there was so much other baggage that weighed it down for me. I'd give it a decent 6.